webinar. You have entered as an organizer and may now speak to any other organizers or panelists on the line. When you are ready to begin the presentation, press the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attend. All right, so hello everybody. We start our uh, webinar uh, for the review of the meter. All right, so let's start uh, talking about lecture number two. Uh, in the lecture number two, uh, we have uh, actually many uh, things that I want you to uh, pay attention. Uh, number one, you need to know what are all the organelles of the of, of the cell, right? What are the functions functions of every single of the organelles on the cell? So you already uh, uh, know that we have the cell division. Cell division, we have mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis is somatic. That means the whole cells of your body. The meiosis is going to be only for sexual cells. What are those sexual cells? The spermatozoid and the, and the uh, ovum. Okay. Uh, one thing, everybody can, uh, let me see here, just a moment. Just a moment. Uh, Yvette, can you tell me, please? You can. Can you see the the PowerPoint? Yeah. Can you hear me clearly? Yes. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to continue. All right. So that is the full, uh, metaphase and prophase. What I want you to remember for this exam is the diff, the member transportation. So what are the type of passive? Uh, what is the type of transportation or passive transportation? Yes. Remember passive. Diffusion, oh, oh, sorry, it's diffusion that is is uh, called the simple diffusion. So this is a passive transportation. We have simple diffusion, facilitate diffusion, and osmosis. All of them will not use energy at all. Protein pump is active and phagocytosis is active. Okay, so just remember all the uh, uh, all the. Uh, uh, active uh, classification of active and what is the best example of passive transportation and what is the best example for uh, active transportation. Just remember we have uh, the isotonic, hypertonic and hypotonic substances that make the, the cell, for example, uh, uh, that is through osmosis, right? Osmosis. So if you have high uh, concentration outside of the cell, the cell is going to lose water. If you have low concentration of uh, or outside of the cell, the, uh, uh, the water is going to enter into the cell. Okay. All right. So for uh, epithelium, what I want you to remember is the uh, the classification of connective tissue. Circulating means blood. Generalized is general lift, right? Remember ligament, fat, and tendons, and the structural is the cartilage. Talking about epithelium, before that, I want you to remember about the goblet cells. Goblet cells. The pseudo stratified epithelium located in the respiratory tract. Okay? All right. So, uh, that is a, a general here for uh, the lecture two. Let's go to the lecture number three. All right, so here I want you to pay attention in few things. Number one, the, the division of the, uh, of the skin is going to be the epidermis, the dermis, and the, and the subcutaneous tissue, right? So this is the dermis. From here, where is exactly my uh, arrow, down here, all this is going to be the dermis. All this dark and clear, these two layers here, apparently two layers, this is the epidermis as you can, as you can see there, right? Okay, so what I want you to remember is about the epidermis. Epidermis, what we find in the epidermis. Epidermis, we have the outer layer that is a keratin. Keratin, keratin is a dead, are dead cells for, uh, composed by keratin. Okay, keratin is a protein, it's not a cell. 
So the cells who are in the outer layer of the epidermis are composed mostly by keratin. Keratin is a protein. So all these cells in the surface of the epidermis are dead cells, so they can ex be exfoliated. All right, so what else we have in the epidermis? In the epidermis, we have the melanocytes. 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 Those are the ones who give the pigmentation of the skin. So what we have in the epidermis? Only just the keratin, and we have the melanocytes who contain the melanin that give the pigmentation of the skin. And the rest, uh, below that, we have all the structures you can think about. The hair follicle, we have sebaceous glands, we have uh, we have the erector pili, that is the uh, uh, muscle that make the, the hair uh, erect. Then we have the arteries, veins, and lymphatic, where in the dermis. All right, so that is about what I want you to remember. Uh, of course, uh, you need to remember everything that we was telling talking in the in the in classroom right so here we have for example burns burns first degree second degree and third degree first degree burn redness and pain second degree we have blisters third degree no pain at all so and areas of necrosis of the dark area so that it means that the tissue then we have the the areas of the body right 9% the whole head, anterior, posterior, anterior, posterior, all head is 9%. It's equal to say the upper extremity, the whole upper extremity, anterior and posteriorly. And so this is both sides. Okay, it's not only one side, it's both are both sides, posterior and anterior, 9%. 36, the same on the trunk is going to be anterior, posterior, 18%, the lower extremities, and the perineum is about 1%. Okay, all right. So that is about the uh, the uh, skin. I want just you to remember this is important. Open eyes, open ears, a lot. Uh, I want to focus in the skeleton and the uh, skeletal system. So for this, I'm going to talk a few things. Number one, uh, we uh, need to talk about the functions of the skeleton. Framework uh, work pro uh, protection movement. A deposit of calcium, a storage of calcium, right, and produce red, uh, produce blood cells. Blood cells. I didn't say red blood cells because the blood cells are composed by white cells and the red blood cells. And we have another structure that are not cells but produced by the red bone marrow called the platelets. All right. So first of all, I want you to remember very well: open eyes, open ears. Here, the uh, components of the of the bone: epiphysis, diaphysis, or shaft, right? Diaphysis of shaft is written here. Shaft, shaft of diaphysis. Okay, all right. So here we have the shaft. This is the how we write it. Diaphysis is the shaft. Shaft, shaft. We have epiphysis in both uh, distal portion. Here we have the red bone marrow where in the epiphysis, and we have here the medullary canal where we have this is the medullary cavity or medullary canal where we have the uh, red, uh, the, sorry, the yellow bone marrow. So that is fat. Here we have in the epiphysis, we have the red bone marrow that is going to produce the three structures, red blood cells, white cells, and the platelets. Okay. All right. So that is about the uh, the bones, uh, I want just you to remember, periosteum is the membrane cover outside of the bone. Endosteum is the membrane uh, uh, lining the medullary canal of the, of the bone. All right, so here we have uh, the, uh, what is the functional unit, open eyes, open ears, functional unit of the bone is the, is the what? Is the um, osteum, okay, osteum. We have here Harvician system or osteon is the same. Okay, Harvician system or osteon is the same. If you remember here, we have the osteocytes that are mature osteoblasts. Osteoblasts are young uh, 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 bone cells who produce the uh, deposit of calcium in the bones. Osteoblast. Osteocyte is a mature osteoblast 
and the osteocyte function is the maintenance and repairing of the repairment of the of the bone. And we have the osteoclast, because we see that take calcium from the bones and put it back into the bone. So just remember what uh, hormones are going to be activating the osteoblast. The osteoblast is activated by the calcitonin. And the osteoclast, we see, is uh, activated by the PTH, the parathyroid hormone, open eyes, open ears. All right, so here we have uh, a, the osteocyte, so that's what we was talking. All right, so let's keep going. <coughs> okay, so here we have some uh, bones. So we have eight bones in the, cran in the cranium. Cranial bones. Cranial bones, we have eight. Frontal, parietal, temporal, etmoidal, sphenoidal, and occipital. One occipital. We have facial bones. How many? We have 14 bones. I want you to get familiar with the mandible. Mandible is, mandible is the jaw, right? Is one mandible. Maxilla, maxilla is the upper jaw, but is actually a pair of them. Zygomatic. Zygomatic is the cheekbone. Okay, zygomatic is the cheekbone. So please be careful with that. Okay. All right. So we already talked about the bones. So uh, I'm going to focus on the vertebras. We have the true ribs, false ribs, and floating ribs, right? Anteriorly and posterior. Anteriorly, we have in relation with the sternum. Posteriorly, all of these 12 ribs are related to the thoracic vertebras. True ribs are the first seven, right? Uh, we have the false ribs. The, se the second group is uh, three of them, and the floating ribs. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are true ribs. Eight, nine, ten, eight, nine, ten, false ribs. And 11 and 12 are the floating ribs. Okay, so uh, that is about what I want just to review with you guys. Uh, about the the bones. So we have here the green stick that is very common in pediatric uh, pediatric what fractures. Okay, so let's do our fourth lecture. So if you can tell, this is is a very fast, very uh, a substantial review. Uh, I'm just trying to do general scenes. So please, I want you to just be careful of what you're studying. You need to study everything, right? because uh, the exam is about everything. All right, so we have, let's talk about the muscular system. And the muscular system, I want you to remember this view. Excellent. All right, so we have the, uh, the, the fibers that are the same to say uh, 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 cell, uh, muscle cell is the same, of five, one fiber. We have the fascicles and we have the group of fascicles make the muscle. So around, around the uh, uh, fiber, we have the endomysium. Around the fascicle, the perimysium. Around the, the muscle, we have the epimysium. And all epimysium, perimysium, and endomysium are coming together to form a tendon that is going to be attached to the bone. All right, so just remember about our giant cat. Okay, giant cat. Giant cat. G is nothing, right? I is... Uh, electrical impulse electrical impulse i and we have a we have the acetylcholine 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 is release this area is called the neuromuscular junction neuro listen to the name neuro is nervous system muscular muscle neuromuscular junction is the junction transition between the nervous system and the muscle right so we have i electrical impulse a acetylcholine then N, a, a, a G, giant, right? G A N, N is sodium. Sodium is going to enter to depolarize the cell membrane that is going to get into the T tubules. When the T tubules is there, that stimulation reaches the endoplasmatic reticulum, who is going to release calcium. Calcium, these dots are calcium. We are in the endoplasmatic reticulum or sarco plasmatic uh, 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 sarcoplasmatic membrane. So this calcium then is coming out, can you see here? And these uh, are going to interact with a trop uh, troponin that is going to release the actin from the myosin and the contraction is going to happen. 
All right, so that is about what I want you to really remember about the physiology of the muscle. Some muscles that you need to remember is the orbicularis oculi, orbicularis oris around the uh, mouth, orbicularis oculi around the eye. Mastication, we have the masseter, mastication masseter. All right. All right, so talking about the nervous system, uh, the nervous system, well, we was talking plenty about nervous system. What I want you to remember is about the CSF. CSF is going to be the cerebral spinal fluid where it's running through, it's running through the uh, ventricular system, right? Ventricular system. And this uh, uh, CSF is running through the uh, 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 fold, fold of the, uh, 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 I mean, is going to run through the meninges. What is covering the, the brain? The meninges. Dura matter, arachnoids, and pia matter. The subarachnoid space, where is, where is the subarachnoid space? Subarachnoid space is under the arachnoid membrane, right? So that's why it's between the arachnoid and the pia matter. That is where it's running the CSF. Okay, so diencephalon. What is the diencephalon? Diencephalon, please, is is nervous system. Are the seats of the organs? We have the thalamus and the hypothalamus. All right, so we have the division of the of the brain stem. The very important, the midbrain, the pons and the medulla oblongata. You must remember for forever the medulla oblongata have the respiratory center, cardiovascular center basal motor center, right? And that is where we have the crossover of the of, uh, uh, nerves. So when you have a stroke on the right side of the brain, your left side is affected on the uh, extremities, for example, right? right? Cerebellum. Cerebellum is the function, is the coordination and balance, right? Coordination, balance, equilibrium of the, of the body. All right, so this is the ventricular system. Who produce the CSF, the coral plexus, and your super ultra favorite, the cranial nerves. Okay, so please be sure that you know the Roman name numbers and the names of each of them. Okay, all right. So that is about our lecture number four. Let's go our next lecture, number five. And uh, number five, we continue to the nervous system. In the nervous system, uh, here, uh, what you must know, we already know that very well, the central nervous system is divided in brain and spinal cord. The brain is divided in the uh, cerebrum, cerebellum, and the brain stem. The brain stem is divided in Midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. In the medulla oblongata, what we have the crossover of the nerves, we have the respiratory center, the cardiovascular center, etc. Right? Okay. So then we have the autonomic nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is divided in sympathetic and the parasympathetic. So please, I want just to uh, just refresh myself. Peripheral nervous system is somatic voluntary and autonomic, involuntary. Somatic are, for example, the muscles that you move in your upper and lower extremities, the biceps, triceps, etc. Autonomic is the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. Sympathetic is going to release at the end, so that means the postganglionic, the adrenaline. And the parasympathetic, the postganglionic, is going to release uh, acetylcholine, right? So acetylcholine, parasympathetic, a, a, a rest and digest, a acetylcholine, cholinergic receptors, muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. Okay, the cholinergic effect that means you stimulate the, choli, the, the cholinergic receptors through the acetylcholine is going to make you everything wet. Remember, wet, right? So, urinary incontinence, fecal incontinence, and uh, sal, uh, uh, increase of salivation. The sympathetic, sympathetic is the uh, fight or flight, right? And that is going to release in the postganglionic the adrenaline. That is going to stimulate 
please, every single word I'm saying, uh, is going to stimulate the alphas and beta receptors. Alpha 1, vasoconstriction. Alpha 2, vasodilation. Beta 1, a heart rate increase. Beta 2, bronchodilation. Remember the effects of the adrenaline sympathetic and the effect of the acetylcholine in the parasympathetic are opposite, opposite. So that is a way you can remember, okay? All right, so let's keep going. So that is, a, just remember one thing is that we have the interneurons. Interneurons are the ones who participate in the arc reflect, right? In the arc reflect. All right, so just remember your neurotransmitters, okay, your neurotransmitters, yeah. uh, uh, and what is the preganglionic and the postganglionic uh, nervous system. Okay. Here we have the interneuron I was look, uh, looking for. So this is the sensory neuron is going to be getting into the posterior portion of the medulla, and that is the efferent, A, A. Then they, they go to the efferent, efferent. Efferent is the motor nerve that is going to make the muscle contract. And interneuron is a bypass. Instead to go from here to the brain, they go directly from the efferent to the efferent. And that is the arc reflect, okay? All right, so that is about this part. So I want to go to the uh, last one that uh, everybody's waiting for, all right? Okay. So talking about the senses, just remember the three chambers, the three layers, uh, where is the aqueous humor, who produced the aqueous humor, remember the aqueous humor, who produced the aqueous humor, the, um, the uh, uh, what we call is the, uh, um, uh, what is it? What is the name? Oh, God. Um, is the ciliary body. The ciliary body. Okay. The ciliary body. Where is the ciliary body? Here. Okay, here. The ciliary body. So this is the suspensory ligament. That is a muscle. So this area is the ciliary body. Ciliary body is a complex composed by ciliary muscles, ciliary vessels, and the ciliary glands. Ciliary glands produce the aqueous humor. Aqueous humor produced from here are going to travel towards the anterior and posterior chamber. This is the area of circulation of the aqueous humor, okay? Posterior of everything, this is the vitreous body. This is the third chamber. The first chamber is anterior chamber. The second chamber, the posterior chamber, all this, what is marking my, my arrow is the posterior chamber. And here is the third chamber called the vitreous bud, okay? All right, so just remember the cornea is a continuation of the, of the what? Of the sclera is transparent. We need to remember the uh, rods and the cones. Rods for night vision, cones for a bright light colors and crispy vision. We have the extrinsic muscles, all the muscles who are going to move your eye. Three, four, six, three, four, six. Uh, uh, cranial nerve number two, the optic, uh, optic nerve is not making the move, uh, eye movement. It's going to produce vision. Optic number, optic nerve number two, cranial nerve number two is vision, no movement. Okay? The movement are three, four, six. Three, four, ocular motor, trochlear, and the abducens. Okay. All right, so now uh, we have the hearing, we have the uh, cochlea, we have the organs of corti, right? That is where we have the organs of corti that is going to transform the wave sounds into electrical impulse going through the, opti the auditory uh, nerve, that is the vestibulocochlear nerve number eight. Okay, so let's talk about the endocrine system. In the endocrine system, what I want you to remember is the uh, is part of the homeostasis. We have the uh, the, uh, the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus is part of the diencephalon, right? Okay, that is nervous system. Correct, perfect. So we have below that we have the pituitary gland. Gland is a gland. It's endocrine. So the correlation or the relation between the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland are going to be called the homeostasis, homeostasis. Pituitary gland, 
pituitary gland is called the hypophysis. You need to remember that. Open eyes, open ears, or oh, master gland, master gland. This uh, master gland, or uh, uh, they are going to divide it in anterior pituitary gland called adenohypophysis and the posterior pituitary gland called the neurohypophysis. The anterior pituitary gland adenohypophysis is going to have six hormones. You will remember the G P tal G growth hormone, growth hormone, a target organ, muscles and bones. What is doing growth? G P P is the prolactin, prolactin target organ, breast. What is doing? Production of milk. G P tal T T is T S H, the thyroid stimulant hormone. Who produces the T S H? Okay. So the TSH is produced by the pituitary gland, right? So that anterior pituitary gland. So we are talking about the GPTAL. Who produces the GPTAL? The anterior pituitary gland. T is the TSH, the thyroid stimulant hormone. Who produces that? The pituitary gland or hypophysis or adenohypophysis, okay? So what is doing the TSH is stimulate the thyroid gland that is the target organ to produce then T3 and T4. So what is the function? To create energy, more ATPs. Or less ATPs, depends, right? Because you can produce more or less T3 and T4. Uh, GPTAL, uh, A, the adrenocorticotropin hormone, adreno, adrenal gland, cortico, cortex, cortex of the adrenal gland is going to produce what? Aldosterone, sex hormones, and cortisol. Basically, in a, when we talk about this part, uh, this uh, a stimulus mostly what they produce is the cortisol, right? But you need to consider cortisol, aldosterone, and sex hormone. Who produce that? The cortex of the adrenal gland. G P tal L luteal hormone produce ovulation. What is the target organ? The ovary. And then G P tal F G P tal F follicular stimulant hormone target organ ovary. What is going to do? Uh, stimulate the proliferation of follicles that produce estrogens, estrogens. So how many hormones we have in anterior pituitary gland? Six. Then we go to the posterior pituitary gland. We have two, uh, two hormones, the oxytocin and the uh, ADH. Oxytocin, what is the target organ? There is two target organs, the uterus and the other one is the uh, breast. What is doing the, in the breast, the oxytocin? Ejection, ejection of the milk. Contraction of the uterus, in case of the uterus. Then we have the ADH, the antidiuretic hormone. The ADH is going to retain fluids in the kidney, okay? All right, so uh, one thing I want to um, uh, tell you is, please, aldosterone. Don't forget about aldosterone. Aldosterone, okay? Aldosterone. Aldosterone is going to uh, re reabsorb sodium. Where? In the kidney. So sodium is going to be followed by water. So if you eat more sodium, you retain more water, right? So you have more volume in your blood, more pressure in your vessels. So if you have somebody who has hypertension, the first thing you're going to tell, don't take salt. Because if you decrease the salt, there is no reabsorption of salt, uh, water. So the blood volume is going to be lower and there is no actually high pressure or help to control the blood pressure okay uh, so please just remember about what we was talking today in this class the pth and the calcitonin remember the pth and calcitonin who stimulate the calcitonin or uh, pth calcitonin and pth are the levels of calcium in blood if you have low calcium in blood what what is going to happen is going to activate the pth Low calcium in blood activate the PTH. So please, PT, low levels of calcium are going to uh, stimulate the release of PTH. PTH stimulate the osteoclast, and the osteoclast take calcium from the bones and elevate now the calcium in, in blood. Before it was low, but with this, we increase the calcium to normal levels, 8.5 to 10 milligrams per deciliter. And the opposite is the calcitonin, calcitonin. And the last thing I want you to remember is the, uh, the pancreas. The pancreas, we have this uh, 
cells, what we call the uh, the what the Langerhans cells, the Langerhans cells. These Langerhans cells, oh, Langer Langerhans islets, are going to be embedded, embedded here in the pancreas, like a gelatin and the strawberries floating in the gelatin. The strawberries are actually the comparison for the eyelids of Langerhans. Let's open the, the strawberry, sorry, the eyelids of Langerhans is what we have inside here. We have alpha, beta, and we have delta cells that, oh, here, delta cells. So what we need to uh, uh, remember always is alpha and beta. Beta insulin, beta insulin, beta insulin. And the alpha is the glucagon. Alpha is the glucagon. What is doing the insulin? Putting glucose inside the cell. What is doing the glucagon? The opposite. Taking the glycogen turned into glucose, and then the glucose come out from the cell and get into the into the red blood into into the blood. Okay. All right. So for this, I just make a very brief summary of our uh, midterm. Uh, uh, just a moment. Just a moment. All right, so I'm going to uh, close my, just a moment. Uh, okay, here.